G'day guys, Benji here and welcome back to the channel. As all of you know, buy now pay later companies are some of the most talked about companies on the ASX and they have also experienced some crazy, crazy growth over the past 12 months. But today we have absolutely huge news that is sure to shake up the scene and that is PayPal. PayPal has finally launched its own buy now pay later service in Australia called pay in four. And the main question that everyone is asking is what does this mean for the Aussie buy now pay later stocks like Afterpay, Zip, Sezzle and others? Is this going to be their downfall? Can they keep up with a giant like PayPal? So today we're gonna to take a look into PayPal's new buy now pay later service, how it stacks up against the existing major players and what the implications might be for the buy now pay later space. And for those of you who are not familiar with PayPal, it's a US listed company under the ticker PYPL, currently trading at $241.76 at the time of recording and it operates a technology platform and digital payments currency enabling digital and mobile payments on behalf of consumers and merchants worldwide. So let's get started here with a service actually offered by PayPal. So PayPal actually launched their pay in four platform in the US last year, September, but now it's official that pay in four is coming to Australia. So you can see shoppers will now have the option to simply choose the pay in four option at checkout at millions of online stores. This allows them to split payment into four, one every fortnight, with no interest and no impact on their credit score. So right off the bat, my first impression is that this is definitely a big competitor for Afterpay. With other buy now pay laters like Zip, there are customizable repayment options. However, it seems that both PayPal and Afterpay are gonna be offering shoppers four fixed repayments spread over four fortnights. And same with Afterpay, if you miss a payment on the pay for platform, you may be charged a fee. So PayPal's platform is expected out early June 2021, which means there's definitely gonna be some fierce competition for the end of financial year sales and into the future going into the holiday season. So where does PayPal stand as a company when compared to the Aussie buy now pay laters? Let's take a look. So looking here at PayPal's key financial metrics, we can see that they also benefited immensely from the accelerated adoption of online payments and e-commerce driven by COVID lockdowns, growing their net new active accounts up 72% to 16 million, bringing their total active accounts to 377 million, and PayPal's total payment volume is up 36% to 277 billion dollars and that's in US dollars. We also see PayPal grew their net revenue 22%, bringing their revenues to $21.45 billion and PayPal is actually forecasting their revenues to continue to grow at 28% into the first quarter of FY21. So that's just a brief rundown of PayPal's key metrics to give you an idea of their scale. But for reference, Afterpay has 13.1 million active customers compared to PayPal's 377 million. And whilst PayPal's active customer base also includes their non-buy now pay later customers, it is definitely worth considering when comparing the two as now existing PayPal users will be given the option to use the pay in four platform if they like. So what does all this mean for the buy now pay later scene and are the buy now pay later stock prices about to crash and burn? I think it's very early to say, but I gotta admit that this development will definitely shake up the buy now pay later scene a bit and you can definitely expect some volatility going forward. Surprisingly, on the day of recording, we actually saw some of the buy now pay laters rise, like Afterpay, OpenPay, and Split It, but others like Layby, Sezzle, and Zip fell a fair bit. So I think we first have to do some peer comparison. So what I've done here, as you can see, is created this group map that shows all the major listed buy now pay later player positions relative to each other. So on the horizontal axis, we can see here that they have their ticket size. So smaller ticket basically means less money involved on the platform. And now on the vertical axis, we have flexibility. So how flexible the platform is for their customers. So starting from the top right, I've put Splitter into its own box just because it utilizes a customer's existing credit, so it's not highly comparable to others. Next, we have Hum, which is used for larger purchases, ranging from 1K to 30K, and they offer repayments of 6, 12, 24, all the way up to 60 months. So I've placed Hum very high for flexibility and ticket size. Now under Hum, we can see here that we have Zip Money, which is Zip's platform for large purchases over 1K, offering flexible repayments, weekly, fortnightly, or monthly. 
Moving over now, to the left we see a Bundle, which is owned by Hum, and it's their platform for everyday purchases. You pay in two weeks, but you do get the option to snooze for an extra fortnight or hibernate as they like to say, which means combine all your bills over six fortnights. Under Bundle, we have ZipPay, which is for purchases under 1K and offers $10 minimum weekly, fortnightly or monthly repayments. And I've placed Sezzle in line with Afterpay and PayPal as all three have a pay in for system. However, Sezzle's is pay for in six weeks, whereas Afterpay and PayPal's is pay for in four fortnights. Sezzle doesn't have a hard limit, so I've placed it in the middle, whereas Afterpay has a 1K purchase limit with 2K outstanding limit for those users with good credit history on the Afterpay platform. I haven't seen what PayPal's limit is in Australia, but in the US it is available for purchases between $30 to $600, so also quite a small ticket, I would say. And just for the heads up, I've actually excluded non-listed buy now, pay later players like Klarna and Fupay. So using this map, we can see that Afterpay at this stage can only really capture the lower left quadrant of small ticket and low flexibility platforms with their current offerings. This means that the platforms currently under the most threat from PayPal are Afterpay, Sezzle and Laybuy. Potentially bundle and dip pay to a lesser extent as these platforms have differentiated their services enough to hopefully offer them some protection. And I think it's definitely too soon to tell for sure what is going to happen here, but I'm not about to go and sell my zip shares just yet. I am interested to see how this will play out. And as I've stated previously, I do only allocate a small percentage of my own portfolio to speculation. Last time I checked, it was around 3% of my portfolio, but definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments. Is is this the beginning of the end for the buy now pay later players or will they survive and as always guys thank you so much for watching please remember these videos are just my opinion they don't constitute financial advice always make sure to do your own research because what might work for me in my portfolio what i might think about a stock may not be suitable for you guys necessarily uh, if you have watched until this point, consider clicking that subscribe button, maybe hitting like. These videos take me a while to make, but I, again, I've said this before in the previous videos, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I love the community that we're building here. It's so much fun to wake up and read the comments and communicate with you guys, and we're having a good time. We'll catch you all in the next one. Take care, everybody. See you later.